Rome, a town on the river Tiber, created a vast empire more than 2,000 years ago. This empire needed to be secured. With the help of the Roman army and their auxiliaries, protection could be guaranteed. The emperors of Rome established a powerful tool of control, monumental frontiers which enclosed the whole of the empire. In the 2nd century AD, the Roman territory comprised large parts of Europe, the Near East and North Africa. The frontiers of this imperium secured stability for the empire. At the same time, they were a zone of contact for different peoples. All frontier systems together were more than 5,000 kilometers long. At regular distances, larger or smaller military forts and watchtowers controlled movement across the boundary. Rivers, palisades of wood and stone or earth walls formed continuous barriers. Sometimes it was actually a, a linear barrier, a, a wall, um, an earthen bank, uh, which itself was, building of which this was marked by inscriptions, such as we see here in the Hunterian Museum. These wonderful slabs record the building of the Antonine Wall. Today, the former Roman frontiers are a common heritage of three continents and of universal value for humanity. The Roman Limes in Germany and Hadrian's Wall in England have already been declared World Heritage Sites by UNESCO. There is actually only one other construction on the World Heritage List that is comparable with this, and that is the Great Wall of China. This means that such a long frontier fortification, the value of such a monument, was immediately acknowledged by the World Heritage Committee. The frontiers of the Roman Empire have an outstanding cultural value. They were not only the frontier line of one of the greatest civilizations, but also a masterpiece of human genius and architecture. And a place where different ideas, societies and religions had their influence on each side of the border. Over the next few years, World Heritage Site status is being sought for other parts of the Roman frontiers, like the Antonine Wall in Scotland, the Danube from Germany to the Black Sea, and the Rhine. One of the interesting developments recently has been the creation of a new World Heritage Site, Frontiers of the Roman Empire. Most World Heritage Sites, and there are 800 of them across the world, are single sites. Very few cut across modern boundaries, what is now trying to be created is a wholly new concept which is a, 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 an international, a multinational World Heritage Sites which runs across different countries. And this is the frontiers of the Roman Empire, World Heritage Site. This is an erbe, was the this is a heritage which needs to be protected by the whole of humanity and everything needs to be done in order to pass on this special heritage to future generations 
Because of this, the cross-border or transnational sites have a very special importance because the countries are forced to work together. Beziehungsweise die Städten, die transnational sind, diese haben für uns eine ganz besondere Bedeutung, weil die Länder sind gezwungen zusammenzuarbeiten. For centuries, Roman remains have fascinated people. Many monuments have been examined and some reconstructed. But it was really only with the Renaissance in, for us, perhaps the, the um, 15th century, the 1400s, that people came to look again at Roman frontiers and record them. And the great era of recording structures and writing about them really started uh, in the um, 17th century. And then, of course, more visitors came, more records were taken, and eventually in the 19th century, archaeology started. Roman military architecture was very uniform and was found in all parts of the empire, and especially along the frontiers. But regional variations can be recognized. Soldiers could move from one end of the empire to another, officers did much more regularly, and there was a sort of uniformity created. But of course the structures that soldiers lived in had to be adapted to the local circumstances. So if you go to a, a fort in the Near East, in, in Syria or Jordan today, uh, it will be a very different sort of fort from that you would see on the northern frontier along the Danube or the Rhine or in Britain. Uh, because it w related to the, the climate. Only some remains of the monumental Roman frontier systems have survived. Therefore, the protection of these monuments is very important. In general, we can say that everything on the World Heritage List has contributed to the cultural identity of the people, and still does. But I think we still need to do more to encourage awareness, also in young people, also in schools. Because the most important objective of the World Heritage Convention is that the protection is not for us, but for the following generations, and that also includes continuing development. To guarantee that the Roman frontiers will get the protection they need, scientists and experts from different countries are now working together. Many international projects are underway and knowledge and experience are being exchanged. The Roman Empire offers us a great opportunity for international action today. And in fact, uh, Roman archaeologists, right the way across Europe, from the Atlantic to the Black Sea, are combining in an EU project, uh, called uh, Culture 2000 project, called simply Frontiers of the Roman Empire. Trans-regional research projects are possible because Rome spread its culture throughout Europe and beyond. Its progress to ruling an empire was possible because the Romans had a rigid organization. The security of the provinces was necessary in order to guarantee a flourishing economy.
The Romans also, like we are, were very concerned with the control of people moving into their space. They, want, they had regulations which governed people's entry into their empire, just as we have. You had not only entry points, such as Checkpoint Charlie, as it used to be between East and West Germany, also customs to pay, as we do. The frontiers weren't just about military defence, they were about frontier control. And frontier control is what we're still bothered about in our world today. Many towns and cities in Europe go back to a Roman frontier fort. Likewise, in the landscape, remains of the Roman frontiers are preserved, sometimes covered by soil or flooded by water. I think there is still a lot to learn about Roman frontiers wherever we go. And there have been revolutions in our understanding. I mean, it's only a hundred years ago that proper excavation started on Roman frontiers. Only 50 years or 60 years ago did aerial photography make a great deal of difference, leading to the discovery of totally new sites. And today we have another revolution in geophysical survey. In the eastern part of Europe, emphasis is put on research and the presentation of Roman remains. Here too, the foundations for nomination as a UNESCO World Heritage Site are being laid. The Roman frontiers do not divide anymore. Today, they connect many different countries through a common history and modern research. We've just finished a report on Europe, on the 48 countries which make up Europe, according to UNESCO's definition. And in this process it became very clear that history is a common history. You cannot only look at the history of Germany or the history of England. You have to look at European history as a whole. Europe is growing together. For the integration of the different states within the European Union, it is necessary to promote an awareness of their common history. An appreciation of our past not only helps with the move towards integration, but also creates a better understanding between countries and cultures. I think countries will simply join as they see the advantages, the cooperation of working with other colleagues across and the moment Europe and we hope beyond, I think will encourage other countries to join. Already from starting 20 years ago with One World Heritage Site, Hadra's Wall, the German frontier has joined, other countries such as Austria, Slovakia, Hungary, Croatia have indicated that they want to join in this World Heritage Site and more will follow. Rome's former frontiers are fascinating monuments. They provide a wonderful insight into the unique history of a remarkable empire and its civilization. These remains of our past need our special protection to ensure their preservation and their availability for research by future generations.